welcome to The Photography Guy. I'm your host, The Photography Guy. Let's get started here with another great photo show. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Wow, where's that coming from? Ah. That might have been coming from, actually, I believe that's coming from right here. Yep. All right, that's where it's coming from. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back once again to The Photography Guy. And let me get my show notes up here, as always. This is episode number 75 for Sunday, December the 27th, 2015. I'm your host, Jack. Thanks for joining me here to learn more about your digital cameras and how to make great photographs. Please check out my website at thephotographyguy.net where you can comment on these shows. If you're listening to the audio podcast, please check out my YouTube videos at 42 Technoman. Once again, that's 42 Technoman. Please visit my learning site at jtclearning.com. That's jtclearning.com. You know, there's hours of uh, Photoshop Elements learning on that site, and uh, many of you have signed up already, and I hope that many uh, more of you do. And I'm thinking, um, maybe respond to me on this one, but I'm thinking of having a special entry price for uh, Photoshop Elements 14. And I started preparing the class already. I started preparing that course. But what I want to do is, Open that course up right now. Instead of the normal $40 I charge, I want to give you an early bird special of $30. So for $30, you can begin learning Photoshop Elements 14 and uh, watch as I build that course up. And then that way you can just stay with that course and keep following along uh, each and every step of the way. So I believe I'll be opening that today. And like I said, I think I'll open that for $30. So it's a $10 savings if you sign up early. Once I get the course completed, what's going to happen is then it will go up to its normal $40. Uh, folks, don't forget you can join our Facebook group, and that Facebook group is Jack's Tech Corner, where you can uh, look at some great photographs from uh, all of our members out there of that group. Uh, it's a free membership. You know, it is a closed group, so you have to uh, request to come into the group. Uh, but if you have a love for photography, a love for editing, then it's a pretty good group. It's a pretty good, it's been, uh, I've had that going on for quite some time. I wanted to show you, um, because last week, a lot of people out there was actually talking about um, not being able to find the chat room. So I wanted to show you that, where that chat room is. Let me get my mouse over here. And let's see if we can bring this up here. Uh, if I can find my mouse here. There we go. So here we are. So these, the show you're currently watching right now is probably the one I have here. Of course, this one's paused, so we don't get that feedback of the audio. But if you scroll down a little bit towards the bottom, here's the chat room right here. So you can just click in here, like uh, type uh, good morning all. Of course, you might want to spell it right. And just hit enter. And when you hit enter, you will see it will actually come up. And that actually... Looking at this one, it's coming up as Harley Day Rider because this is on my other account. So be that what it is. Um, that's my other YouTube channel that I uh, am currently running. So, But anyway, that is me. I just said good morning all. So that's where you can chat and uh, type along there and ask questions about uh, the show and try to find out anything you might want to know about. Uh, bring back up my show notes here and switch cameras back over. I will say good morning to my friend Fabian out there, and I'm sure uh, Vicky is also watching. So I will say good morning to Vicky, and I'm glad to have you on board there this morning. And get these headphones out of the way. And to all the folks listening on iTunes to the audio podcast, uh, I want to say good morning to you, and uh, or good day whenever you may be listening to this. And uh, I'm glad you found us here at The Photography Guy. Um, as I said, this is show number 75, so I've been doing this for a while. Um, at one time, we were on a different, um, we had a show called Photography Weekly. Uh, it kind of went by the wayside, but so many people asked me to bring it back, so I just reinvented it, I guess, and became the photography guy. 
uh, because we talk about all things photography here, not just when I started this show several years ago, uh, we called it Photoshop Elements Weekly. And that was okay, um, except for the fact that um, we started talking about photography. And I have had a lot of people email me and say, wait, Jack, <clears throat> excuse me. I thought we were talking about uh, Photoshop Elements. And now all of a sudden you're talking about <laughs> you're talking about photography. And they were a little bit uh, drawn back by that. So I had to rebrand it uh, Photography Weekly, which I like that name, but I couldn't buy the domain name. So I had to figure out something else. So I rebranded it now, and it's the Photography Guys. So still the great shows, uh, great type of shows that we've been doing in a long time. And, um, and Fabian will tell you, he's been watching probably since those earlier days gone by. So uh, sorry it took me a little bit longer getting on this morning. We didn't start exactly at 11 o'clock. And the reason that happened was, I'll tell you, once I get that out of the way, I don't want to spill this coffee on this camera. That wouldn't be good. The reason that happened was I looked at my back window as I was preparing for the show, and I see my neighbor's uh, Rottweiler, my neighbor's dog, walking through my yard. So I sent my neighbor a text real quick and said, hey, your dog is outside the fence. And she said, will you get him and put him back inside the fence? I looked up the clock, and it said 11 o'clock. I was like, uh-oh, I'm supposed to be going on uh, to be with you folks right now. But... In helping your neighbor, you should help your neighbor when you have the opportunity. I don't think anybody would knock me for that one. Uh, myself and my wife went out, took one of our dog leashes. Um, we grabbed we grabbed the big Rottweiler, which uh, he's really a big baby, uh, and uh, took him over and got him back in their fence. So he's safe and sound, put back away. Not that he won't get back out again. And uh, she apparently knows where the hole is in her fence. So, But uh, he is tucked back inside the fence. So today I was asked by one of the viewers um, to talk about lenses. And I did a show quite a while back on lenses, but I think maybe I can bring you some more um, more uh, interesting information on lenses, not just about what I have. I'm going to show you that, of course, um, but a little bit about the, the lens itself. We're not going to go into the technical makeup of the lens because I really don't care, <laughs> uh, to be quite honest with you, and you probably don't care either. Uh, our idea is what lens should I buy for, you know, what situation should I buy a lens for? And um, that is what we want to talk about today and, and maybe try to clarify a little bit of uh, different brands out there. I want to talk to you about that a little bit. So first of all, we all know that lens lenses come in many different sizes and price ranges. So how do we know what to buy and better yet, what we should carry in our gear bag? You know, that's the big thing here is what you need to carry in your gear bag. The gear bag becomes very, very heavy. I know I have a, um, a, a gear bag that I carry around. I've showed it to you before. I think we did a what's in your gear bag. And I'll probably do that show again too. But as you pack more and more stuff into your gear bag, what seems to happen is it starts to get very, very heavy. So as it gets very, very heavy, you get to that point where you just can't carry that gear bag around anymore. This happened to us when we went to uh, Las Vegas. So we went to Vegas and we were going to take a trip to the Grand Canyon, a bus tour. So we didn't rent a car and we wanted to take a bus tour to the Grand Canyon. So uh, I was loading up all my equipment, my bag, and my wife says, wow, Jack, this, this is horribly heavy. Uh, and we're going to be carrying this around all day on and off the bus to look at tour stops and, you know, take pictures. I said, but I need these lenses. I need all my lenses in here. Well, we didn't take one lens I'm going to show you, and, and, and definitely a reason why we didn't take it, but we didn't take one particular lens, and um, I did okay without it. And I'm going to tell you about the shooter that I've become over the years uh, and the shooter that I used to be. So you know, we're going to talk about that a little bit. So first we're going to talk about the branding of lenses because this really upsets me um, beyond belief, it, it just blows my mind about the um, the way people think about other companies. And what I mean by that is uh, there's other lens companies out there that are very good. Um, Fabian can attest to this because I know he has one from this other company. I don't know if he has any more. Um, and I believe he has a Tokina lens. And my wide angle lens we're going to talk about is, you can see or on the front there, is a Tokina lens. And it's a great piece of glass. I mean, you know, it's very solid built. Um, it, it, uh, you know, it goes from uh, 17 to 35. This is my wide angle lens. We're going to talk about that, but it's a Tokina lens. 
Why did I go Tokina and not Nikon or Nikkor? Obviously, price. Price plays a big part in whatever we do in our lifetime. But don't believe that if you're buying cheap lenses, and there are cheap lenses, don't get me wrong, but don't believe if you're buying cheap, then you're getting junk. Read the reviews. Talk to other people in our, uh, in our um, Facebook group. Ask them what they're using. Ask them how they like it. Ask, get, ask them for a review. None of these companies I'm showing you today are sponsors of this show. Um, I don't owe, owe any of these folks anything. I pay full retail for my equipment just like you do. So we're going to talk about that. And I'm just checking here, making sure the stream's good. I would like to say here really quickly, as we're rolling along here, good morning to a few, a few of you out there. Good morning to Bob. Um, I see you're in the chat room. You found it okay. Um, good morning to Fabian, and good morning to Vicky. I see you're in the chat room. Um, also, um, good morning to... Um, oh, that is Fabian. Fabian says he, do, he, he, he does. No, he does. He shoots Tamron lenses. That's what it was, not Tokina. And I didn't even think of that lens this morning. Thanks, Fabian. Tamron and Sigma. And he said they're good quality for the price. So don't also don't forget Tamron and don't check them. Don't, uh, you know, um, push them out of your equation of looking for lenses. I will tell you there is a lens and even camera gear. Be very careful because B&H Photo Video was doing this for all that. And Adorama was also doing this. They sell one. If a camera or a lens is marked as gray, G-R-A-Y, that specifies that that particular lens cannot carry a warranty in the United States or that particular camera cannot carry a warranty in the United States. It's marked gray uh, gear. Why they even bring it in and sell it, I have no idea. Gray gear is meant for overseas. It's an overseas, um, you know, a lot of it will come without English instructions. So be very careful when you're looking for stuff. It's going to look like a really good price, but there's a reason for that. Now, I said I have a Tokina lens. Fabian said he has a uh, Tamron lens, which I had a Tamron lens at one time. It was a wide-angle lens, um, but it was for a DX body and not an FX uh, full-frame body. So I, um, I got rid of that lens, obviously, and I had to buy the Tokina. The next lens is a Sigma lens, and if you look on my camera right now, You'll see, um, if you can see this thing here, actually take this off. And if you can see this, it's all black. I don't know how well this camera will catch it. This is my Sigma 24 by 70. Now, the Sigma 24 by 70, this is an f2.8, okay? And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here, but let's talk first about the um, wider or larger f-stops. The idea of the f2.8 is to allow more light into your lens to hit your sensor. And that allows us to shoot at a wider open aperture, right? Because we can close those down. As you close the aperture down, you start closing it down, you leave less light in. With a wider aperture or a wider opening in this camera, you leave more light in. That gives us two things with these lenses that I found, folks. One, they're way more expensive than your kit lens. Most kit lenses shoot, I believe it's 5.3 f-stop to 6.4 f-stop in that range. If I'm not 100% on with that, please don't yell at me or scream at me for that. Look at your lens. Look at the f-stop on it. It should tell you what it is. And this one, this particular one, is an f2.8. Yep, this is 1 to 2.8. So look at your lens and see. Now, kit lens is more of a closed down aperture or a smaller aperture than a wider aperture. So these lenses do, um, are for many reasons, more expensive because they work in low light situations. So I did a lot of my wedding shooting uh, without flash. And the reason you don't want to use flash when you're shooting a wedding, obviously, is because you become the center of attention. When you shoot a wedding, you have to actually blend into the decor of the church, the reception hall. Um, you know, there's just a lot of places where you just won't use flash. But if you have a good lens, like an f2.8 lens, either Sigma, Tokina, Tamron, or the other two that we're going to talk about in a second, you're going to shoot really, really nice pictures. You can open up your, uh, your ISO, your ISO, open it up higher and take really good pictures and capture some really, really nice light with these lenses. That's why you're paying the money. The second thing about these lenses that I found uh, over time 
is that they are a lot heavier because they're built a lot better. They have wider openers, wider openings. They have better glass in them. You're paying for the overall, uh, the overall lens itself. So you're paying for a lot of stuff there. So it's something to think about when you're looking for lenses. It's going to cost you some money for these lenses. So this is my 2470. Again, it's a Sigma, and I've used it for countless weddings. I use it for senior portraits uh, when we're out shooting portraits. I use it for, it's my all-around go-to lens. I mean, it's a really, really great lens. I've had it for years. It's still kicking. I've dropped it a couple times and never had any trouble with it. I did have somebody email me once and says, Jack, Sigma lenses are not as sharp as the Nikon or Nikkor lenses. Um, I've never noticed any uh, less sharpening with this lens than any other Nikon lens out there. Let's talk about price for a minute. This lens, this particular lens, probably cost me about, um, I would probably go about $900 for this 24 by 70, roughly. And it was that was a few years ago, so it's probably more now. And the same Nikon lens, if you look up Nikon, and we're going to do that real quick uh, as we're talking here. And I'm going to try to find it uh, real fast. We'll just go to BH Photo Video. Um, BH Photo Video. Uh, it's just one company I've used out there. And we're going to say 24 by 70 Nikon lens. And we'll see what we come up with here. So the Nikon lens of the 24 by 70 uh, right now um, is going for $1,796. Again, that's $1,976. This particular Sigma lens, I'm going to tell you what the Sigma lens is going for. Um, we are looking at, for a 24 by 70 Sigma lens right now, it's $800. So you can't go wrong with this Sigma lens. You can buy it for Canon, Nikon, Sony, um, as well as Sigma cameras, obviously. No, not this lens, the 24 by 70. I'm showing you the Kina and talking about a Sigma. And if you look at Tokina, I don't even know if they make one. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see what theirs will run. The Tokina, if I can find it, 24 by 70, is $1,000. Uh, it's also an f2.8 FX lens. And that just happens to be for the Canon body. For the Nikon, it's the same price. So you have options when you're buying lenses. And again, the 24 by 70 f2.8 is more of a lens that you're going to use indoors, lower than normal lighting situations. And it's a very, very fast focus lens. So even in really good light, if you're in sunlight, and I've used it to shoot um, uh, people running track and field, I can get javelins going through the air because it'll focus very, very rapidly. So you're paying for a big part of that package. So let's say you don't have enough money to buy a f2.8. You just you bought your camera for $1,000, $1,500, $2,000, and you don't have enough money to buy yourself a, an f2.8. And that's okay. I didn't either. I tell people, honestly, most of my gear came from the working of doing weddings and senior, senior portraits. And Fabian will tell you, I know he does a lot of portraiture work. As you do work and make some money with your camera, even if you're shooting birthday parties for 50 bucks, take that money, put it in a piggy bank or something. As I built that money up is when I started buying my gear. So this gear is not out of our, not out of our household budget. It's out of what I've made with the gear. I put it back into the camera gear. So, you know, uh, uh, but I'm just like you are. I mean, I am not, you know, sitting here and saying, hey, I'm a millionaire. I just buy whatever I want, you know, taking a ride on my jet later on. That's not true. I'm very much like you are. We have a household budget. You know, we have to pay uh, mortgage payments and, and, you know, we have to pay everything else, utilities and whatever else, groceries. Uh, so anyhow, that's that soapbox. So that's that lens. But if you don't have the money for that lens, this lens here is great. And this is a 50 millimeter fixed lens. So what's a fixed lens? Well, a fixed lens is you can't turn it. My wife, so many times I put this on at basketball games for the kids and she'll want to zoom it. Well, there's no zoom. It's a fixed lens. What I like about it, though, it is extremely small. Again, this is a 50 millimeters. 
And what's nice about this lens, 50 millimeter, is they say, and I don't know if I believe it, they say 50 millimeters is normally what you view. Like if I'm sitting here looking uh, right at you guys now, uh, looking at the wall behind you guys, that is my 50 millimeter view. I find this to be a little tighter than that, uh, to my taste anyway. Let's just take this, and we're going to throw this up on my on my uh, D600 here. So let me pop this lens off. And also, folks, lenses are very easy to take off. Once you take your lens off, though, do this for me. Make sure you always do this. Take the lens cap from the other lens that you're going to put on and just throw it on your back of your, of your lens. You don't want dust to be in these lenses at all. So just do that. Then put it in your camera bag or wherever. But what I really like about this lens, and I've used this lens in the city of Pittsburgh many times, going down, shooting just scenery, walking around, is look how small and lightweight that is. That makes that camera weigh next to nothing with that lens on there. And it's beautiful pictures. You can use this for portraits. You can use it for shooting landscapes. And again, it's 50 millimeters, so it's supposed to be what you are viewing anyway. Um, but I also bought this lens because, like I said, of our girls playing basketball when they were younger. To shoot in a gymnasium in very low light, this f1.8 is a very wide aperture. So you can get a lot of light into the camera. It's super fast focusing. I mean, it's, it focuses dead on. And folks, these lenses can be purchased for about 150 bucks. Okay, so 150 or 900 so if you're starting out, you're looking for a lens to get you by and start shooting wonderful pictures in the house, birthday pictures, or use the 50 millimeter. Now, granted, your zoom, your zoom on this 50 millimeter is going to be your feet. And I, I've demonstrated this before. You walk closer to your subject to zoom. You come back from your subject to, to get a wide angle lens or wide angle view. And it is super fast. Um, and I can take this aperture all the way down to 1.8, which is pretty amazing. And when I shoot, what happens is when you shoot at f1.8, what you're also doing is putting that background in soft focus. So be careful. Here's your word of caution with these lenses. And I've done this thousands of times. When you're using these types of lenses, the, uh, the wider apertures, you're going to get a shallow depth of field. So in other words, what you're focusing on at 1.8 is like pretty much right in front of the camera. And when you take that picture, everything in the back tends to blur itself out. We call that soft focus, okay? Or I call it blowing out the background, one or the other, whichever you want to refer to it as. So understand aperture. And when you're shooting a basketball game, you don't just shoot on f1.8 because you're, you know, getting the most available light in the camera, da, da, da. You want to shoot so you're also getting everything else in focus on the court. Be careful, and you'll learn this. These are things you got to learn. And we don't learn by just listening to me talk on Sunday mornings. We also learn by you shooting. You got to get the camera out. You got to shoot. If it's a rainy day, snowy day, it's cold outside, don't worry about that. Get your camera out with one of these lenses and take pictures indoors. Um, I used to have a girl that watched this show, um, Jessica, some years ago, and uh she said when she first started watching my shows, she thought it was a it was a gardening show. And I was thinking, why would you think my shows was a gardening show? And Fabian could play a test of this. Most times my model is a as a gnome, is a garden gnome. Uh, my wife bought it for me. I'm kind of into gnomes. I think they're cool little creatures or cool little statues, I guess. And I would sit one up on a, a stool, on a on a photography stool, and I took pictures of that gnome, different lighting or whatever, to, to show you how to light to show you how to make shadow, uh, and to show you how to do editing. So she thought it was a gardening show. But that's what I do when I'm indoors. I'm stuck inside, and it's raining out, and I can't get my cameras out. I don't leave them in the bag. I come in the studio and start clicking away. Set your lights up, set some flash up, whatever you have. Have some fun with your, uh, with your gear. So that's just another thought for you there. So 50 millimeters, a wonderful lens. Like I said, very, very inexpensive. Now, another lens I started to shoot a lot of, and the reason is I bought this lens when I was going to the Grand Canyon. And the reason I bought this lens to go to the Grand Canyon is because I wanted to see as much of the Grand Canyon as I could. This is my Tokina wide angle lens. I've recently been looking at a fisheye lens, and if I buy one, my wife may just cut my toes off or something. <laughs> 
Now, she does support my photography. Um, but when I buy these kind of lenses, I don't need these for shooting weddings. I don't use these for shooting uh, portrait photography. I don't use these for shooting senior pictures. These are purely for my enjoyment to go out and shoot just because I want to shoot. This is a wide angle lens. It is a 17 by 35. And this happens to be an F4. Okay, so it's not F2.8. It's an F4 lens. But I'm using this out in the sunlight. You know, as I said, the Grand Canyon. I love shooting wide. Um, if I can afford to buy a fisheye lens, I would have one because wide shooting for landscape photography, for doing uh, HDR work, high dynamic range work, it's just beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful what we can capture with a wide angle lens. We're getting to see twice the amount that you used to see. I used to have a lens that was a 12 by 24, uh, but I haven't been able to find a 12 by 24 for uh, my new full frame camera. So I'm kind of stuck shooting right now at 17 is the widest I can go, which is still pretty wide. It works pretty well, but I would rather have um, something even wider than this. And also with this lens, it's a little different because instead of having a switch on, when you want to go to manual focus, you just pull this little, uh, pull the whole ring down and that's manual focus. Then you can focus the camera yourself. If you put it up, that's autofocus on your camera. So it'll autofocus. Something else to look for when you're looking at lenses, make sure it has an autofocus. Manual focus lenses are very inexpensive. But, you know, and I'm not saying you can't. I do sometimes manual focus, but the cameras that we spend our great amount of money on, the thing about these cameras is that they make some great autofocus in there. I mean, it's got tons of autofocus points on them, usually 36 to 56 or so autofocus points. You can zero that down to a point of focus, like one point. Let that do your autofocusing. That camera's going to be better than your eye will be. All right. But if you want a manual focus, you can always throw any of these lenses into manual focus. So as I'm talking, I'm just popping back and forth here, just looking at the, um, looking at the chat room. And um, Meiji, it's M-A-J, says, how is the purple fairing on those sigmas how's the purple fringing i don't see any purple fringing on my sigma lenses to be honest with you um they are i've never seen any problem in any of the wedding portraits which you have a lot of white white gowns uh, we have a lot of white paper we shoot uh, on the floor you know and i don't really see anything any purple uh, problems with my sigma lenses if you are having that i would contact sigma and say hey look there might be something wrong with my lens and see if they will uh, fix that up for you. That's something you might want to think about doing. Okay, so the next lens I want to talk to you about here is my handy dandy 70 by 200. 70 by 200. This is also a Sigma lens. We're going to get into this lens hood in the middle. But this is also a Sigma lens. If you can see that it's very big, it's very, very heavy. This is the lens that did not make it to the Grand Canyon with us. This lens stayed back in the hotel room. I just stuck it in the safe in the room, shut the door, and we locked it up. And we left it in the hotel room. Why did I stick it in the safe? Well, this lens, folks, cost me, I think it was about $1,200. Again, if I looked at the Nikon lens, and somebody told me at work they purchased one here, or somebody bought them one, which is really, really nice. Um, I'm going to just look real quick here what that lens would cost you on a Nikon lens. 200 Nikon. And we'll see what that would cost me. So if you buy this lens in a Nikon lens, you're looking at $2,096. Uh, this particular lens in the Sigma, uh, the 70 by 200 f2.8, they're both f2.8, is actually, oh, why did it show me that? It's now selling for $1,200. So I did $1,100, now it's for $1,200. And that's for a Nikon. Now, this lens is also a great portrait lens, and many people don't use it for portrait lenses. I've done some test shooting in the studio here with my wife as a subject, and we got some really, really nice looking portraits with this lens. The thing is, you have to stand further back from your subject. You don't want to do a whole lot of zooming, but if you go to 200 on these lenses, what happens is you really get that soft focus background. You really blow out that background and um, put everything in soft focus, and you really get a nice uh, tight picture here because of the f2.8. 
Now they do go all the way up to F22. Again, you can open those up and you can use those um, definitely as a higher. Why is that going? I'm trying to see where this is. Okay. So you can definitely open it up to F22. Um, this one is again a 2.8 70 by 200. Now with this lens, I already told you it's very heavy. So with it being very heavy, I like to use the little invention that somebody created some while, some time ago called a monopod. Not so much because um, you're going to get camera shake, but just because you get tired of carrying it around. So if you take the monopod and screw it right onto the bottom of the lens, the lens, not the camera, it makes it very nice to carry this around with your camera. It will sit right on the back. It doesn't fall off. You go and you can shoot. And I did that a lot with track meets. I would stand by the fence just with this here sitting, you know, with my with my lens on it. And I was able to sit and bring it up and take some quick shots at the track meet and then sit it back into my into my hand. I didn't have to hold that heavy lens up that whole time. So it makes it very nice to have yourself a monopod. These monopods, you can go to your local discount stores. You don't have to go to a camera store to buy these things. You can buy a decent one at, at a now you're gonna buy better ones if you go to your camera stores. I don't know how much you'll be using it. But for as much as I use it, I bought this at a local um, discount store like a Walmart or Walgreens or wherever they sell camera gear, um, probably for 20 bucks. Again, it's very nice. It has a padded grip on the top of it, and it works very, very well. So one thing you've seen me moving around here with these lenses is what's called the lens hood. Okay, this is a lens hood. And the reason the lens hood is good, and I often laugh, because so many people use misuse the lens hood, in my view. If you do it this way, I'm not meaning to offend anybody. Here's another lens hood. Okay, This is the 24 by 70. This is for the 70 by 200. They go right on to the front of the lens. They just pop on here. Uh, they just twist on, and there you go. So there you are. Just twist right in the front. You can put your cap on there. You can see you can pull your cap out, and you can put it back on with the lens hood on. The proper way to carry your lens hood with you, oops, if I can get the lens cap back on, the, oh, is not to throw it on your laptop. The proper way to carry your lens hood with you is to turn it backwards and click it on there. And you can see it just rides right really nicely on the lens itself. So you always have it with you. One time we went, <laughs> we went to, I'm going to tell you where we went to. We went to a St. Patrick's Day parade in the city of Pittsburgh. My wife walked up. We, she stuck us in between two buildings. And I thought, this was really nice in the morning until the parade started. Once the parade started, the sun started to beat down between the buildings right on to the subjects that I was trying to shoot. And what happened was, I have to find those pictures because, remember, I had a hard drive crash. I don't know if I have those any longer. What happens was we started to get a ton of sunspots all over people. And I spent a lot of time trying to clean that up. You can, but... What's the use? It was parade pictures. I didn't even know anybody in the parade. I was just shooting for fun. But if you have your lens hood, you can throw your lens hood on. And uh, the idea of the lens hood is to block the rays, the sun rays from coming down and giving you sunspots because you're shooting straight out. It's kind of like a sun visor, right, in your car. It's going to kind of block that lens. Well, mine, I decided, well, I'm going to make my camera a little lighter in the morning. So where did where was my my lens hood. My lens hood was in the chunk of the car because I took it off. I threw it in the car. So I'm not going to take I won't need that today. And that's where it was. So it was in the chunk of the car. Another thing that you need to buy when you buy a lens is buy yourself. I'm going to unscrew this. Buy yourself a, a filter. The filter will protect your glass and your lens. This is just a UV filter is all this is. Uh, if you want to know what size, look at your lens. It will tell you this lens happens to say uh, 75 millimeters. That's what the screw is that goes in here. You can pick these up from anywhere from, you know, uh, I found them on eBay for $5. You can buy sets for $20. And you can also buy these for $100. So depending on what you want to buy. But the idea of a UV one, it keeps the UV light out. But it also mainly is just clear and it protects the glass on your camera, on your lens. And it just simply screws in. You don't have to, just like so, you don't have to put a wrench on there and tighten it down. Uh, it's just going to just finger tight, 
and it will stay on there for you. It doesn't do anything to the picture. Now they do have them. They do have all kind of different lens filters. I think we did uh, we did a session before on different lens filters that I own. Um, I can go back and revisit that if anybody wants to do that sometime, and we'll talk about those different lens filters. But you see, the cap still fits on the front of it, just like so, and uh, still works. Um, seems that the stream is not moving for whatever reason. Like the camera quit working. I don't know why that is. Let's see here if we can uh, get the camera to work again. Nope. I don't understand why that stopped. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't understand why that stopped working there. I don't know if we can get it back on or not. We'll try here real quick. See if we can bring it back up. Um, there we go. So there we are. Okay. Anyway, I think we diverted a catastrophe there, but I don't know why the camera quit working. It just uh, locked up all of a sudden. So we'll have to go back and check out where we stopped. But anyway, so that is that. Uh, we talked about the the filters, the the filters in the camera themselves, and um, hopefully everybody got all of that there. Um. Going back to the chat room, because I know you guys will be talking about it here. Um, okay, so Vicky says, um, I use my 50 millimeter lens for landscape quite often. And you can, Vicky. Absolutely, it works great. Um, and Fabian says, I have a Tamron 70 by 200 f2.8. Paid $800 for it and use it for a portrait lens also. So that's good to know. So there you go. It's very easy to use those. Um, they work very, very well. And, yep, looks like we're streaming okay there. So, so sorry about that little hiccup. I don't know what happened. Uh, again, that's me not watching the stream. Things do happen at times. Um, but it is what it is. So we're going to go back here in just a little bit, and we're going to talk here. Um, let's see. So we talked about the different usages. We looked at our different lenses. Um, we talked about the monopod and how it works. And now we're going to talk about, though, just really briefly, a friend of mine purchased a lens. I believe it's a 100 by 600 millimeter, and I think it's an f5.3 or 5.8. This lens is used by this particular person for shooting bird's nests. Uh, she loves taking pictures of bald eagles, and she goes out and she takes pictures of all these uh, bird's nests and things. And what it allows her to do is zoom very, very far out. So is it a problem that she's shooting with an F5 point, whatever it is, 5.3, 5.8? And the answer is no. That doesn't matter whatsoever. And the reason it doesn't matter is because she has the sunlight and she's lighting that, she's giving it enough light for that camera and that lens to do what she wants it to do. So do you always need the wider F-stops of the 2.8, the 1.8? No. If you're shooting a lot, if it appears to be you're shooting a lot in low light situations, then yes, you do need that or you do want that. Will a kit lens work? Yes, a kit lens will work. But remember, the, the more you close down your aperture, the more you're going to need light. Light is very, very important. These lenses, I needed to purchase these lenses over time because shooting weddings, we found very early on that we didn't have wider aperture lens because I couldn't afford them when I started shooting weddings. Uh, it just was out of our price range to buy all that gear. Uh, because shooting a wedding, Fabian can tell you, he's done a couple weddings. Shooting a wedding, you have to remember that you want two camera bodies. It's more important to have two camera bodies that work and enough batteries that work for, for your camera. Uh, maybe you know a flash, an off-camera flash. That's more important to give yourself enough light at that point, when you're starting out, to worry about the lenses. The lenses are more, you know, second. I mean, if you can do it all at once, by all means do it. If not, I would do the lighting first, kit lens to start yourself out and see if you like it. Um, I have a couple of friends that went out and shot a wedding. They said they will never do it again, ever. So it's very stressful. It's a one time you do it once and um, you don't get to have a do over. So it's something to think about. So hopefully, uh, this little talk today about lenses helped you out. It's going to help you out with your uh, photography a little bit. Um, I keep wanting to grab that mouse. I'm going to go back to the chat room here for a second. 
uh, just to see here if anybody's asking any more questions. And it looks like we're okay. Uh, again, um, I don't know why that hiccup happened, why we actually stopped. It seemed like the camera's uh, just locked up there for some reason. I don't know why. It's the first time it's ever happened uh, on this particular show with the new computer. So, uh, But that's live streaming. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes something don't like a camera, and it will just lock up. I don't know why that happens, but it does happen from time to time. You know, what are you going to do? But anyway, you can always watch the rerun on um, YouTube. I will be posting that later on today. Um, and also, you got the podcast. If you go to thephotographyguy.net, the podcast is there. So you listen to the audio in your car. You can download this show from iTunes. So it's, there's a lot of different ways you can pick up this show. So, folks, I want to thank you very much for tuning into this show. Uh, we had a lot of live viewers today. And thank you so much for joining me here. Uh, I do post the uh, link up on Facebook of the uh, viewer uh, each Sunday morning, and we try very hard to bring these shows to you every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is when we're on. If you're viewing this on YouTube and you say, look, Jack, I'm so sorry I couldn't be alive, that's okay because I'm very familiar with time zones. Um, you know, if, if you're out in Hawaii, it may be very early in the morning. Uh, you know, if you're overseas, it may be very late in the day. And I am very aware of time zones. You know, I'm just happy that you do come to watch us. We record it and put it on YouTube so you can see it at any time you want to watch it. And that's what life is today. I told my wife, we live life through what's called DVR, right? Uh, we do all of our videos, even our TV shows. We record all those now. We don't watch live because we don't like sitting through all those commercials and stuff. So, but speaking about commercials, I got to tell you before you go, remember these folks. Help these folks out. Use my website, thephotographyguy.net, and use the links on there. Check out Green Screen Wizard by Ken if you want any green screening products. Um, check out Smug Mug. They do all of your pro photography uh, cells. You put your photographs up there. I've done a video on that uh, several years ago or maybe a year ago. You can go back and look at that video. How you post them, you set your own pricing for those, and then you sell your photographs. And then you start buying some of this gear that I showed you today. Um, you also want to look at uh, Flickr. I love Flickr. I use Flickr all the time. And again, don't check out, don't forget my website, jtclearning.com. Uh, again, Photoshop Elements 14, uh, the pre-class. I have a lot of the videos done already. It's built pretty nice. So I'm going to open that up today uh, for $30 a person. So you can sign up for 30 bucks. They're normally 40. That's $10 off. And as I build them, you'll get the new videos and you're a member for that, for those videos forever. Uh, you don't finish that course and you're gone. Uh, and one person said, Jack, I won't watch the last video because I don't want to be deleted. It doesn't work that way. Once you sign up for my courses, you're on there forever. So again, if you want to learn Photoshop Elements, check out the online courses at jtclearning.com. Don't forget to check out those sponsors. They'll be happy that you check them out as well as I'll be happy that you check them out also. Sorry about the hiccup in the video. And you may not even see that uh, come when I when I edit this out. So, but for the live viewers, you probably did see it. All right, take care, everybody. Have a great work week. And until next week, get those cameras out there, get those shutters clicking, get your editors editing, and I'll see you back here next week on the Photography Guy. Bye bye for now. Thanks for tuning into the Photography Guy. I am a photography guy, and I'll be here once again next time for more photography tips and tricks. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the show and enjoy the music. Okay, everybody, thank you very much for joining me again. And I will talk to you next Sunday. Hopefully it's not raining where you are. It is really raining here, absolutely raining. And Virginia Langley um, said that you've done some weddings also, and you're right. The most important part of weddings is lighting. Um, you know, good lighting, quality lighting, because churches, ordinarily churches, are horrible with light. Absolutely <laughs> definitely horrible with light. I mean, just, it, it's terrible. 
um, just like basketball courts are, uh, gymnasiums and schools, even college level. I've shot basketball games at the college level, and <clears throat> their lighting is horrible. So there you have it. But thanks, to everybody. I'm going to cut out of here now. And, um, you know, if you missed any of this, believe me, it'll be back up on YouTube. Uh, once I get some of this editing done, I'll try to figure out what happened on that on that stream. I don't exactly know uh, what happened or what broke. I mean, it never never has happened with this new computer. So there was a USB glitch somewhere. Something happened in the USB, I'm sure. And, uh, and that happens. So I am still looking at the, into the idea of putting a new camera here as our main camera. We're looking at putting my uh, Canon, uh, H, Canon HD camcorder in there uh, with an HDMI cable into the computer. So I'm trying to see how we can do that. But we'll see how the live viewing goes and how these shows uh, pan out for us. All right. Well, I got some work to do. So thanks, everybody. And I'll see you back here next Sunday on The Photography Guy. So long for now. Bye-bye.